And hello, everyone. I am super excited to be talking to you today with my haven't done in a long time Facebook Live. We're going to be talking to you about is there a difference between chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue? I think it's a great, great question. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen, and if you're watching this, then you're watching it live in my Facebook group, and I will be posting it to YouTube called Your Adrenal Fix. And you can ask me questions so I can answer as best I can because we're broadcasting directly into the Facebook group. So I thought this is a great question that one of our participants or our followers posted. And she asked, hey, uh, what's the difference between chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue? Or is there a difference? Hey, Paul, hope you're doing well in Southern California, bud. Um, I always see you saying some nice things and moderating this group. So I do really appreciate you. Um, so anyways, and I hope you're doing well. So as far as the question, I took a couple of things down. Um, the first thing I would say is, does it matter, right? Does it matter? Um, and and because if it doesn't, if you if it if the differences are unique to each, that it changes your game plan, then it does matter. Um, but the, if the differences are semantics, then it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you still have to get to the root cause, whether you call it this, that, or the other, right? But anyway, so I'm gonna, I went online, just did a little research today, and this is what the Mayo Clinic calls chronic fatigue. It's a complicated disorder. It's characterized by extreme fatigue that can be explained by, if that can't be explained by any underlining medical condition. The fatigue may, uh, may be worse with physical or mental activity but it doesn't improve with the rest. So I have a couple problems with that. I mean, it can't be explained by any underlining medical condition. I have a problem with that. Uh, if you um, run blood tests and you don't see anything that fall outside of the healthy the ranges, the so-called healthy ranges, which are really lab ranges, then you're gonna say there's no so-called problem. Um, but if I'm looking in the ocean like this and I don't see any boats, then I'm gonna say there's no boats in the ocean. Um, however, when I take my blinders off, I see that there's actually boats in the ocean. So I think it's a pretty elitist um, explanation of saying that there's no um, explanation, uh, there's no medical underlining medical condition. And we'll talk about that throughout this conversation. So that's the definition from the Mayo Clinic. Complicated disorder um, characterized by extreme fatigue that can't be explained by any underlining medical condition that we can find. Um, the fatigue may emphasis on that we can find. Um, the fatigue may be uh, worse with physical or mental activity, but it doesn't improve with rest. So that's the definition. Adrenal fatigue, however, is proponents. So proponents of the adrenal fatigue diagnosis claim um, there is a mild that this is a mild form of adrenal insufficiency. Um, caused by chronic stress and existing blood tests according to those that theorize this aren't sensitive enough to detect such small uh, declines in your adrenal fatigue but your body is. So I have a couple of problems with this definition as well. Number one, proponents. Who are the ever popular proponents that claim that is a mild form of adrenal insufficiency. So in the medical textbooks, adrenal insufficiency is what is recognized, and that is Addison's disease, and they do a stimulation test, and there's an ICD-10 code, and they can give you um, cort cortisone or prednisone or hydrocortisone to support it, but ultimately what happens is you do an ACTH stim test, um, which is typically the hormone that is made by the pituitary that knocks on the adrenal's door and the adrenal opens it up and says, come on in. So basically the messages from your brain, from your pituitary, are being signaled to the adrenals that create a cortisol response. If it doesn't create a cortisol response, it is called adrenal insufficiency. So proponents claim from the Mayo Clinic that um, it is a mild form. So it, if you give an ACTH stim test, um, it isn't negative, but it isn't boosting. And I could kind of accept that a little bit, um, but there's just so many things that go on in terms of potentially the pituitary is so wound up and, and, and beaten down from medications and stress and glucose, insul ins insulin issues, um, inflammation, all the things that your body would be stressed out or chronic 
plea fatigue from in the first place. Um, so it's pretty assume, assuming to say, if I give you something in the body that causes the adrenals to work, then the adrenals are working fine to assume that that something is available, right? It doesn't always make sense. Um, so I have a problem with that diagnosis too, but here's the bottom line is both of them are the same thing, in my opinion. That's right, I said it. Both of them are the same thing. And, and really what happens is there's actually a great Time Magazine uh, article on stress this month. Um, Time Magazine was like $17 now. It's crazy. Um, but I bought it because I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja. And um, it, it talks about stress and it talks about how Hans Salye was the godfather or the father of stress theory. And basically it talks about how the body has a generalized response to the environment, to the demands of life, to be able to balance the checkbook, balance the groceries, balance the family, balance the job, balance all of our demands. And then now we're exposed to chemicals and toxins and you know pesticides and pathogens and mineral deficient foods and we're exposed to so many things on a daily basis that it creates a stress response in your body. And over time, that stress response breaks down and we're tired and we're exhausted. So what does it matter if you call it chronic fatigue or you call it adrenal fatigue? It's fatigue and your body isn't able to mount enough of a, demand, a supply to meet the demand. Um, it's kind of like I tell patients, it's kind of like um, you having a job where your salary is really low and the cost of living is really high. Um, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to, to do a lot in that circumstance and your body prioritizes and says, okay, I, I don't have enough um, s supply to meet the demand. So we're going to start to see things um, shut down or break down. And that typically comes down to an autonomic nervous system breakdown. So we get anxiety, we get heart palpitations, we stand up and we feel our blood pressure drops. Um, we feel cold all the time, or maybe we're sweating profusely. Um, potentially, you can't focus and concentrate. You have brain fog, you crash in the middle of the day, your circadian rhythms are off. Um, again, what does it matter if it's called chronic fatigue or it's called adrenal fatigue. It matters for the insurance companies because if I wanna get reimbursed, I have to come up with a legitimate ICD-10 code. But in my mind, a diagnosis means that you are going to come up with an explanation of what's going on. And to me, the diagnosis for both is um, a broken down stress response system where your body's demand and supply is not equal um, as a result, your body prioritizes what it's going to do with that available supply, and some things are going to take a back seat. That's the ICD-10 code for both. Um, so anyways, um, see a couple people on here that I haven't seen for a while. Ruth, I hope you're doing well. I, I know you and I have to talk again, um, and I'm concerned about you know how you've been doing. I, I see that there are a lot of challenges that you have going on, so I want to talk to you about that. And Melissa, I hope you're doing well. It's been a long time. I apologize. I hope the twins are well. Um, or is it triplets? I think it's twins, right, with another child. And Lois, I, you know, you and I haven't talked for a while, so I hope you're doing well. And Kimberly as well, I, I remember you out in Seattle and hope everything's going out with going on well with you as well. So, so if there's any questions, let me know. I, I definitely want to do this a lot more. Um, I've been super, super busy, but not busy enough for you guys that, to answer your questions and give you some insights. So, so to summarize again, um, is there a difference between chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue? From the, diagno from the definition, um, the, the Mayo Clinic has a pretty, um, to, just to recap, they say it's a complicated disorder. It's characterized by extreme fatigue that can't be explained by underlining any underlining medical conditions. That's the part I wanted to get into. So when I do a review now on someone, we always look at the genetic susceptibilities always 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 i will not work with you if i don't look at your genetic susceptibilities and the reason that is is because 
we can look at your ability to make energy from proteins, carbs, and fats. How well are you set up for that? We can look at your ability to make antioxidants to put out free radicals. We can look at your ability to support and, uh, and regulate your immune system. We can look at your ability to repair and regenerate your DNA from your hair, your skin, your teeth, your nail, your bones. We can look at your ability to transport oxygen and iron and magnesium and copper into the body or out of the body into the cells. We can look at your ability to clear out histamines and, and support your GI health and process certain foods. We can look at your ability to look at your hormones and make and break those as well as your neurotransmitters. We can look at a pretty important stuff. And every single time I talk to someone, I say, hey, it looks like you're oxidizing your iron. It looks like you have Fenton reactions. It looks like you have hydro hydroxyl radicals that are creating lipid peroxidation. It looks like you're uncoupling your nitric oxide. It looks like you have a lot of peroxynitrite, which is depleting your BH4, and that's causing you neurotransmitter imbalances, and you can't focus and concentrate. How many times have someone told that to you, I ask them? And they say, never. I've never heard anyone tell me that. Well, then that would fit the complicated disorder, right? Complicated. Um, it would also explain extreme fatigue, and um, it wouldn't explain the unexplained medical condition. It's explained right there. So just because it's unexplained doesn't mean it can't be explained. It just means that the doctor has to do a little bit more searching so that they can explain it. That's what it means. It really does. Um, so I think it's a BS definition. Um, I think that there isn't a difference between chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. Um, I think that it, at the fundamental level, it comes down to your ability to produce energy. It comes down with an ability to handle your stressors, to repair your body, to make things happen, and to have demand and supply equal each other. That's what I think it comes down to. Um, in the, if you missed it, the definition of adrenal fatigue from the Mayo Clinic is proponents of the adrenal fatigue diagnosis claim that this is a mild form of adrenal insufficiency caused by chronic stress um, ex uh, and um, existing blood tests, according to these um, people that say that it, it exists, um, aren't sensitive enough, enough to detect such um, small declines in adrenal function, but your body does. So to me, it's a cop-out definition from the Mayo Clinic. Um, they just don't want to put their foot in the water, so to speak. And um, that creates um, sort of an dissolving of any responsibility of this isn't a legitimate diagnosis. We don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, it's an internet thing. And um, you've been reading uh, things on the internet and your blood tests are normal. We're not going to look at the genetic stuff. We just want to put you on a pill and we want to get you out of our office. I, I hate to say it um, and I hate to be so dismal, but I really do think that's that's what kind of goes on. So um, I would love to answer your questions. Michael, I hope you're doing well. Sorry we didn't talk more the other day. I wanted to call you and I do intend to call you. I, I, we got lots to talk about. Liz, um, or sorry, hi Inga um, from Oz here, I made it. So, oh, from down under, that's right. I'm glad you're here. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then even Paul said, glad you can make it. Um, Steve, hope you're doing well. Love that you're doing your Facebook lives all the time. We still need to meet, right? I mean, it's been a long time. We got to come together and, and meet at some point. And um, I look forward to that. So that's what I had anticipated talking to you guys today about. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so what would we do? How about we answer that? What would we do given that if there, it doesn't really matter if there's a difference between chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue. At the end of the day, they're both kind of bad definitions to explain what's going on in the body. Um, more often than not, it's an inability to put out fires. It's an in inability to signal your immune system. It's an inability to repair and regenerate. Um, and it's a supply and demand problem. Um, and at the end of the day, it causes the body to break down. That's what it is. Whether you call it chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue, in my mind, doesn't matter. Um, and it really becomes dogmatic. And you have people fighting over terms and definitions when at the end of the day, you're losing sight of the, those that are suffering with a chronic problem that aren't getting answers that are becoming an epidemic in our society. It really is. So what do I suggest that you need to do? Well, we suggest that everyone needs to get a genetic test. I mean, nutrigenomic test. They really need to do that. 
Number two, you need to have proper um, workups that are customizable around your, your specific epigenetic triggers. So those customizable epigenetic triggers can be um, foods, um, histamines, oxalates. Um, they can be copper and iron uh, oxidation. They can be also um, physical, emotional traumas, chemical exposures, pesticides, sprays, heavy metals. Um, we need to determine, we need to dig down and figure out what it is that are creating these things so that we can customize those genetic susceptibilities, which is the roadmap um, with the landmines or the obstacles in that roadmap so that we can create detours to get to the destination. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. So um, what also I suggest is obviously mindset. Mindset's huge. Um, you know, in that Time magazine for $17, uh, where you just came out on stress, which I'll do some more Facebook Lives about that, um, it talks about um, perception, right? And you can have two people that experience the same event and they have very different physical and physiological outcomes of their interpretations. And um, I'll give you an example. Today I was stressing out about something because I knew um, that um, there was um, something that we were waiting to hear about. And when I found out the answer to the question, I all of a sudden gave myself permission to turn off my stress response. I shouldn't have had that stress response on in the first place. Um, and, and that comes down to energy and frequencies. That comes down to focusing on what it is that you want um, and, and living in that energy and frequency and not focusing in on what it is you don't want and living in that frequency. Um, because there is something called coherence where your body um, likes to vibrate at the same frequency as other things and creates a certain amount of amplitude. And that's straight out of physics um, towards the things that are like frequency. So change your frequency, change your frequency to a better frequency um, and you start to see your health improve. So it comes down to um, the fact that you have to have some kind of mental component to this as well. Now, the thing that really upsets me about the Mayo Clinic definition of chronic fatigue is it's a complicated disorder. Complicated. Life is complicated. It's not a pretty put it in a bow and put it in a nice package diagnosis. There's usually about 30 different things that are going on that requires the doctor to put their thinking cap on and every case or presentation is complicated. So it goes without saying that it's, it's, it's a complicated thing, um, which I think is a silly definition. So anyways, guys, there's no questions um, unless I don't see them. Oh, I haven't scrolled down. So um, great, great questions. Can activated Epstein-Barr virus cause fatigue? Absolutely. Um, and that's kind of the chicken or the egg. Um, if the body is under stress and duress, it's going to have more likelihood for the, you know, the, the, the mice to come out of and play when the cat's away. So absolutely. Joanne, hope you're doing well. And Sue, I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, Helena, hi there. Does adrenal fatigue improve in pregnancy? Sometimes, um, you know, the guys, the doctors on this call will tell you about um, the fact that um, you you have sort of a Th1 and a Th2, and that's kind of an old definition of your immune system because we know there are other uh, Th17. Um, there's these in, um, immune messengers um, that create a uh, assembly line of responses, um, and that changes and flips when you get pregnant. So a lot of the time when someone's struggling and they get pregnant, they, they change their immune system frequency, if you will, and a lot of the times they feel a lot better, um, provided that they have a lot of energy happening in the body at the level that they want to. Um, baby is 11 weeks, don't know why. Um, okay, so that's probably why. Hi, Joanne, um, and then Lupe, hello from Central Texas. Hello, hope you're doing well. Claudia Johnson makes perfect sense, good. Hey, Tomas, I saw that you sent me something today or the other day. I'm sorry I didn't get back, back to you. I, I think it was your blood work. 15 minutes of more knowledge than my doctor learned in all his years of training. I'm happy to know I'm working with the right person. I, I wish I could say that in your accent, but I can picture you saying that in, in a great Irish accent. Um, thank you very much, and um, I will make sure I look at your, your pictures. I, I saw it come in, and you can imagine we're busy. 
but never busy enough to look at that. Claudia, huge trigger for me. Um, so true. Melissa, darn it, I missed the beginning. You can come back. I'll tag you so that you watch it again. Here, I'll just put your name right in here, and then you can watch it again and again and again. Um, I'll, I'll do that when this is done. And Teresa, my one of my favorite people of all time. Hope you're doing well. Um, I miss our talks. And then Jen, uh, I'm dealing with internal tremors or shaking. I have to lay down for it to stop. Have you heard of this a lot? I have heard of it a lot. Is it a part of an adrenal fatigue? Um, it's, it's part of the cluster of supply and demand problems where you're not able to equal the two. Um, and we look at things like neurological issues, um, B vitamins, recycling, um, detoxification, um, immune challenge and stuff. Yeah, everything we just said. Um, it's okay, this video is recorded and you'll be able to see it shortly. Paul, you're the best. So anyways, guys, I will do this more often. I've missed it. Uh, I've been super busy. Uh, I've been flying the plane and I got to learn to pass out the peanuts and check the luggage and make the tickets too. So I will make sure I do that. Um, hope you guys got a lot of information out of this. Um, you know what I'll do is I will continue to scroll through the list of questions that go on in this group and then I will make sure that I look at the ones that I feel get the most threads and then use it as a Facebook Live and I will do the Facebook Lives twice a week now so you guys got to hold me to that. Um, I love those hearts and I love that and I know that's from you um, and it's so nice to say like Teresa Rossi it's like a uh, uh, you have to do it like this. You have to get your hand into it because then it's pronounced properly. But I hope you're doing well. Um, and, and I do miss our talk. So anyways, guys, that's all I got for you tonight. Um, I hope you got a lot out of this. And I look forward to ending your chronic fatigue, your adrenal fatigue, your supply is not equaling demand fatigue um, nightmare. Have an awesome evening. Take care.